ocean waves breaking on the shore have always fascinated man. There are several types of waves crossing the oceans twice every day. Shock waves caused by earthquakes also speed through the water from time to time. But the most common waves form when winds blow across the surface of the ocean. You've probably seen a light wind pushing ripples across a lake in the summertime. In a wave tank, we can see the same kind of ripples forming as air moves across the water's surface. As the ripples form, due to lowered air pressure, friction between the moving air and the water surface drag them along. The wind blowing over the new ripples presses against one side and reduces the air pressure on the other. So, the ripples grow in size and in time are large enough to be called waves. In order to study waves, scientists have assigned names to their various parts. They call the highest point on a wave its crest. The lowest point between two crests is called a trough. The distance from the top or crest of a wave to the trough or bottom of a wave is the wave height while the length from one crest to the next is the wave length. The time between one crest and the next is the wave's period and measures the speed at which the wave is traveling. Small ripples may have periods of one second or less. while on a choppy day, periods of one to four seconds are common. The periods of larger waves which form at sea range from five seconds for small waves to 14 or 15 seconds for large ocean swells. The size of a wave depends on how long and hard the wind blows and its fetch. The wind's fetch is the distance over open water that the wind may blow a wave. The energy that forms a wave may travel hundreds of miles across open water to the shore where it breaks. On inland ponds and lakes, winds often blow for days, but the short fetch of the lake results in only small waves. The same wind blowing across miles of open ocean can create much larger waves. Far out in the ocean, winds often do push waves for hundreds of miles. When the winds die, the waves they created continue to move across the surface, sometimes traveling thousands of miles before striking a shoreline. Why doesn't a wave disappear rapidly after the wind dies? How does the energy in a wave travel? Questions like these bothered scientists for years. Perhaps by studying moving waves more closely, we can discover the answers. Have you ever noticed how a floating object moves as waves pass under it? The object moves from side to side and also up and down. The total of the side to side and up and down motion is a circle. The floating object moves in a circle as each wave passes beneath it, but the center of the circle does not move. The water, like the object, moves in circles, but does not travel with the waves, because the wave and its energy are moving through the water, but the water is not moving with the wave. For this reason, waves can travel long distances through the ocean. But what happens when the energy of a wave reaches the shore? The wave
waves break, of course. But not all waves break on shore. Some even break at sea. To find out why waves break, let's return to the wave tank. This time, the tank is set up to simulate the sloping bottom near the shore, and we're watching the waves in slow motion. As a wave approaches the beach, the water becomes more shallow until the ocean bottom begins interfering with the wave. Friction between the water and the bottom begins to slow the lower part of the wave, and as it does so, the motion that was circular becomes elliptical. As the wave approaches the beach, the bottom exerts more and more drag on the wave. The ellipse gets taller and begins to tip over because the energy at the top of the wave is moving faster than that near the bottom. As it does, the wave becomes unstable and breaks. If you watch waves moving toward the beach, you can see them increase in height and finally collapse toward the beach. The waves further off the beach break for the same reason. If a sandbar exists offshore, the waves are modified by the shallow bottom until they break. They then form smaller waves, which break on the beach. When two or more sets of waves generated in different parts of the ocean meet, they can cause the waves to break in groups on the shore. This is called surf beat and appears as a series of large waves followed by a series of small waves. Perhaps you can suggest how surf beat forms. 